My brother George's middle name is Converse, which is after my grandpa. Uh, and I've always, you know, thought, geez, what an odd name. <laughs> but <laughs> middle name, you don't use it anyhow. So. And when it came to me, they didn't give me a middle name. They ran out, they said. They were both in the Navy, and uh, uh, George didn't talk too much about it. Well, neither did John, except I knew that George uh, uh, was on these landing ship crafts. that are the ones that load up with the Marines and bring them into the, the beaches and drop the front end and they all unload, you know. Uh, he was doing that type of thing. Uh, the unfortunate part of that, of course, he, uh, if he's piloting that type of boat, he's standing up there without any protection. And uh, after quite a few of the landings, uh, he, uh, uh, his nerves were getting shot, so they pulled him off of that. Uh, he, uh, he ended up uh, running a, uh, one of those as a uh, mail ship between the larger uh, cruisers and battleships, and then eventually ended up on a destroyer. John, uh, all the time he was in, uh, was on a minesweep. If I remember right, John said there was eight or ten of them, and uh, they all put out to sea to ride the storm out. And out of the eight or ten, there was only about three of them that made it. The rest of them all were sunk. Uh, and John was very easily, uh, he got seasick very easy. And I could just see him on that darn bobber out there, you know, in, the, in high seas. Uh, he was a motor mac, uh, diesel mechanic, and that's what he did on the ship. He maintained the, the diesel motors. And the interesting part of it was that he probably swept all of the harbors before George came in and landed the troops. They never, they knew that each other were there, but they never had a chance to see or talk to each other until uh, after the war when the uh, ships were going into the harbor in uh, Japan to sign the um, uh, treaty. What is it, the, the papers for the end of the war, uh, George's destroyer was a uh, escort for, I believe it's uh, Admiral Nimitz's aircraft carrier and uh, that he was on. John had swept that harbor before they went in and that was the time when they passed each other and had a chance to wave at each other and that was about it. Uh, when John uh, John's boat was sent back, uh, it hit, uh, came back to the uh, Pacific side of the United States and it decided they wanted that boat over on the Atlantic side to put it in mothballs. So he, they f took it all the way down through the Panama Canal, came up the other side and put it in mothballs on that side. Uh, George uh, was just charged in from the uh, Pacific side to come home. Uh, I mentioned earlier that I was in Chicago going through training, uh, uh, and I met John in Chicago as he was coming through, and we spent uh, a half a day or so together before he had to get on a train and continue on home. Uh, so it was kind of an interesting time. I, uh, Bob was not in the service, uh, and... Uh, and I was too young. Uh, the war was over in uh, 46, and I graduated in 46. And uh, there was a group of us that knew darn well we were gonna be drafted in, but all of a sudden there wasn't anything to get drafted into. So we said the heck with it, and we went out and joined the Marine Reserve. And we, so I put in two years in the Marine Reserve then. And then we could quit any time we wanted to, so I did quit. And then uh, we got married, and they drafted me back into the Army, in spite of the fact that I already had some service time in. And in spite of the fact that I was married, and in spite of the fact I had a baby on the way. Mm -hmm. I, he was an amazing man for what he knew. Uh, mechanically inclined, it was just amazing. 
I remember I had a motorcycle That's so and we really tore it all it. apart in the, in the garage of my brother Bob and rebuilt it. A Harley Davidson 80, great big sucker. And we tore that thing all apart. And I said, John, what are we doing? He said, oh, we'll get it back together. And we did. Bob really was more of like a father for me, mm -hmm. but uh, didn't act like a father. I mean, he, but he looked after me. Uh, he's the one that got me my first job, which was working with him at Minneapolis Blueprint. And uh, so it was just a progression of things uh, until we got Rapid Copy, my company started. Uh, George and I were always very close. Uh, he was four years older than me. Uh, John and I were only two years apart. And uh, John was a difficult one to... S sibling rivalry? Yeah, kind of sibling rivalry in a way. He and George never got along. And uh, you'd think eventually someday it would, it would, they would. And John and I got along okay. I just, uh, we were probably too close together. George was soft-hearted. Yeah. Uh, he had seen an awful lot of uh, bad things during the war. When John came home, it was kind of just the opposite. John was uh, pretty bitter. And it took him quite a few years to take and uh, get over the fact that he had spent time in the service, and but eventually it worked out. Uh, strangely, uh, when John was uh, was dying, uh, he was in his home, and they had a um, they had a hospital bed there for him. Uh, George spent uh, pretty much every day with him, and unfortunately, I couldn't. Uh, I was, uh, I got over there a few times, but uh, I wanted to get over there more, but it was interesting uh, for two brothers that really never got along, uh, how, they, uh, how they came together. John, uh, he had retired when he was 42, or 64, I'm sorry, 64. He had a cabin up north on uh, uh, Lake Vermilion and uh, wasn't feeling good. Uh, came back down to figure out what was wrong. His speech was slurred a little bit. And uh, they checked him out and found out he had a brain tumor and uh, gave him six months. And he, was, he died six months later. Brother Bob was 75. He, and, uh, he was with his second wife, Jackie, and they had planned a trip uh, up into Alaska uh, on the, uh, uh, take the ship up the coast. And uh, he had had a physical and they found out he had prostate cancer and they told him, well, go ahead and take the trip. His prostate cancer is always slow. So they took the trip and they came back and his prostate cancer was not slow, it was fast. And, uh, he passed away several months later at the age of 75. Brother George uh, had a real good friend, in a, a, a Dr. Petit. Dr. Petit incidentally owned the nursing home where my folks passed, uh, my dad passed away. Uh, and he was with, uh, with Dr. Petit up at, uh, up at his cabin and uh, uh, Jim Petit woke up one morning and uh, went in to check on George, and George had passed away during the night, and he was 75. Uh, so I'm the, I was the last of the sons at that point. Uh, the sister Eleanor passed away first, didn't she? And she was in her 80s. And then uh, my sister Ruth was in her 90s and she passed away next. And my sister Marge passed away at an early age, uh, early for her, what was she? She wasn't even 70 yet. Mm -hmm. And my sister Carol is still living. She's my youngest 
youngest in the family, down in the uh, Maple Grove. Maple Grove area. Uh, I don't see a whole lot of her. She uh, she uh, married and uh, left town for Canada. Her husband worked for the Sioux Line Railroad, and uh, he was uh, transferred up into Canada, I think Winnipeg, and uh, that's where their three kids were born. And then uh, they were transferred down into uh, Bismarck area and uh, had a chance to come into Minneapolis uh, after quite a few years up there, and they turned it down because they had created a life for themselves up there. So... Uh, they lived up there until he retired, and then they did move down here, uh, as did their children. So uh, that's the last of my family. I'm, she's the last girl, and I'm the last boy.